If I was in a position where someone forced me on the spot to say what my favorite dragon is, there's at least a 25% shot that I would say it's Gudra. So grab yourself a Sodi Pop and let's see how this gooey little dragon does. It's been exactly one year to the day since I did that shiny Haxorus video and we're finally back with the follow-up. And before I forget, the Gudra we're going to see today is shiny because the Pokemon Go community today is going to happen later today. So go get your shiny Gumi. But Haxorus was a very attack-weighted Pokemon, but it started with Outrage. Very, very strong move. And way back then, I posed a question to you guys. Hey, what dragon that starts out with Outrage could make the most use out of it? And I think Gudra is where I landed and we're going to see why. It's a super legendary so you know the stats are gonna be pretty good but the big thing that stands out here is 150 special we get 150 special due to the chancy rule and since dragon is a special type that's exactly what we want for this run flipping over to the learn set I kind of redid some things here you can see the highlighted yellow parts are the moves that I'm using for the run and the red circles they're gonna denote new moves that I added to the game but outrage is the focus you can see here 120 base power it gets stabbed, it hits like a truck, and that's the focal point of this entire run. How far can Outrage carry this Pokemon? So there's nothing early. We don't really have to talk about anything. Bare minimum, don't even pick up any items, and it's straight on to Brock. The intro today is just for the theatrics. We do start out with Aqua Tail. We even have Absorb if we need it, but Aqua Tail, 90 base power, it can just one shot both of Brock's Pokemon very easily, and we can move on just like that. We haven't really seen much Aqua Tail. I think we've only seen it in the Kyogre video from a while ago. Uh, 90 base power, pretty good to start with, but 90% accuracy, you will miss a few times here and there sprinkled throughout the video, but it does give you that little bit of coverage. I do like it a lot. So now I'm going to move on. I got a couple of things to say real quick. Number one is I had a lot of trouble with this video. I had been messing around recording some other stuff. So my settings were kind of messed up in OBS. And for some reason, the bit rate was off and it was downscaling it. So this video is going to be a little bit blurry. Like if you're watching on a big full screen, it's going to be a little bit. Let's just say it's not up to my quality standards, but I, this run was so good. I didn't want to redo it. So I apologize for that. The second thing is that there's a really old Scott Stoltz video. It's a licky tongue video. And it's only like 10 minutes long and I thought about that video for so long like how do you fit a whole run into 10 minutes and today my friends I'm actually gonna try to cut this video down as short as I can just to see if we can do it this is a really good Pokemon this might be my best opportunity but I do have to talk about outrage it's the focal point of the video we've already talked about that 180 effective power with stab and how it works it's just like thrash three to four moves you'll use it so it means it's very PP efficient and it hits like a truck with our massive base special and you can see it on display on the first bug catcher he has three pokemon that's the perfect sweet spot that means you can just tap outrage once and the battle will just auto complete itself and that's just how it's going to go for the vast majority of the game in mount moon there are no extra battles i'm doing the bare minimum that's going to be another theme for the video but i did find it disappointing that i still have to pick up all the candies in the elite of the elite runs you can just kind of skip this rare candy by an escape rope from the mart but i do need it just because we're in the slow leveling group and we're weak to lorelei uh, more on that way later after that we will be heading directly into misty and this one's a little bit more nuanced than everything we've ever seen at least so far for gudra i will be using absorb for star you it's just because if you lock yourself into outrage you're gonna confuse yourself and we're such a low level that misty can easily defeat you but it's in very it's very important to take her down now so you just kind of slow and steady use the absorbs you can take it gudra is extremely bulky and then once the starmie comes out you can just go on the outrage take it down we get a crit here make it short work and this is important for two reasons number one fighting misty now is kind of like a catch-up for experience hitting level 15 is very important and we also get access to bubble beam not as strong as aqua Tail, but it's more reliable it gives you more pp and there's lots of spots with this base special to where we can just kind of roll over nugget bridge and use it to not have to heal Level 15 is also the level in rival number two where we can just straight up just easily one shot the Pidgeotto. Very important, but I will say that you don't really want to open a battle with Outrage because you're going to confuse yourself eventually. It's going to happen here, but I think it's more important to get that one shot and not have to worry about sand attack than it is to play it safe, take a couple of turns to knock it out, and then finish the battle without getting confused. Here you can see it doesn't really matter. I do take a hit from confusion at the end, but Squirtle just can't really do anything to you. So there we go. Another one down. 
as for Nugget Bridge, let's talk about some clusters. Outrage for the most part, like I said earlier, it's very PP efficient. If a trainer has three Pokemon, you can use one PP of Outrage, kill all three Pokemon. It's very, very good. You have high enough special to where Bubble Beam can just take apart most things. You have Aqua Tail if you need it. So very easy, very good. Let's skip down to the SSN. In here, we're going to see me skip Body Slam. Now, if you notice on the level up set, I do learn Body Slam naturally, but I just don't need it for this run. I'm going to skip it. It doesn't help out in any battle, but I do just like earlier in Mount Moon. I have to pick up this rare candy. So I do that. And then looking at rival number three, it's the same exact situation as rival number two. I'm going to just go straight Outrage on the Pidgeotto. I'm not going to play any games of Sand Attack, and that means we're going to easily cruise to this battle. You'll see me hurt myself again, but even though Squirtle has evolved into War Turtle, it just doesn't matter. Now we got Lieutenant Surge, another fight with a slight bit of nuance. You don't just want to go balls to the wall without rage just yet. So you just kind of want to chip down the uh, Voltorb. Doesn't matter what he does. And the strategy that you want for this run is you want to plan out. You always want to assume that you're only going to get a three turn outrage rather than a four turn. So I take Voltorb out. I know Pikachu's a one shot and then I know Raichu's a guaranteed two shot. That's three outrages. I did the math. That means we get another badge. Once again, if you look at the side on the TM list, Gujar pretty much learns everything that's good. Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Earthquake, Body Slam, anything that's good in Gen 1, it learns it, so we will be learning Body Slam immediately. And now, I think it's time to take a look at a little bit of a split data. Remember, we've compared these times to Vanilla Mewtwo, the GOAT of Gen 1, Vanilla at least, and we're pretty far ahead. Now, if you're wondering, I always say this, I feel like, I need to redo Mewtwo, I feel like, but the Misty split is so far ahead because Mewtwo does Nugget Bridge first, but to have a one minute and 11 second lead after the surge split it bodes pretty well and you're kind of starting to see why i would choose this pokemon why i think it had a lot of potential from there we can essentially just start to speed run the game there's not really much importance going on here uh, rock tunnel doesn't really matter rocket hideout very easy Gujar has an incredible learn set to make it through it very easy giovanni's nothing and then we go straight to the celadon buy i don't do any vitamins and i didn't mention this earlier but i don't even buy potions or anything for this run the only thing to note is i do pick up ice beam and if you look at our learn set right now it's very formidable very very good and that's going to take us straight down to erica just to go ahead and pick up another quick gym and there's a lot of runs where i don't like ice beam i'd rather hold off to blizzard but i've been kind of coming around to it a little more and specifically in this run it's the beauty with the execute it's a little bit faster route to make it to erica it can easily one shot it and that's the main reason is where the execute line and the multiple battles will face it that's why i picked it up as for Erica, I just use Ice Beam. I probably could have went Outrage. It is kind of crazy that Ice Beam's only 10 effective power more than just a regular Outrage that's neutral damage, but that's really the power that I'm trying to show off in this video, just how good neutral Dragon moves would be if they were in Gen 1. But this one's not too bad. You can get unlucky, maybe get Rap Stalled if you come in at a bad level and you uh, are undersped by the Victory Bell. Maybe you can get put to sleep. The AI is a little weird in this one. I had written down in my notes that she would only use poison moves, but a lot of times she would go for different stuff. I had seen the Vile Plume actually go for Sleep Powder, but I'm pretty sure that's just because it only has grass moves. But either way, pretty easy battle. We get the crit. Let's move on. You already know that Pokemon Tower doesn't really matter. We can just blast through the Gastlys. I now have Ice Beam so that I don't have to open up with Outrage on the rival anymore. So that's really good. And now let's start kind of picking up to the later parts of the game. Next up is Silco, and we have to pick up what I think is the second optional battle. The Gentleman Candy was the only other optional battle, I'm pretty sure, but we have to go to that 10th floor. It's just too good. Like I said earlier, slow leveling group. We really need the candies, but more importantly, this is where we find Earthquake. This is why we hold off on Body Slam, because Earthquake just gives you more opportunities, specifically on stuff like Agatha later in the game. This is also a very pivotal part for the run, because I will level up to 33 right after the Arbok card key grunt, and I'm going to use five of my rare candies i have like seven right now that's going to hit me to a power spike level 38 which is going to be a pretty tremendous boost in power considering that just look at our learn set it's really strong and we're going to use this level 38 power spike to go straight into rival number five
And what those rare candies did was make this absolutely trivial. In the early iterations of my routing, I was coming here pretty much level 33, and I was picking up extra Carbo so that I made sure I outsped the Pidgeotto, or I guess the Pidgeot in this case, I should say. But those extra levels gave us more speed, way more damage, hit a couple of extra damage rounding thresholds, and you can see here that I'm just mowing everything down in my path. It's a very easy battle, and what I've noticed in a lot of these runs is when rival number five is really trivial, you've already kind of got your learn set down on lock, you've already hit a power spike, it really bodes very, very well for the rest of the run, so let's see if that holds true today. Immediately hopping into Koga, we do have Earthquake, really good, we can one-shot the Coughings, but we're not as attack weighted as some other Pokemon would be, so that means that our special moves do pretty much just as much damage. We can't one-shot the Muck or the Weezing anyway, and what you're going to see here is about what you would expect. I can one-shot the Coughings, take two turns on the other one, I get a self-destruct here to make things a little bit faster, Guja really tanky, hangs on, and I'm starting to be able to see the end in sight. That's going to take us on a brisk swim down to Cinnabar. I do pick up Blizzard just for later. We'll see how that kind of shakes out. That's about the only thing that goes on here. And even though I'm trying to make this video as quick as I possibly can, I still just need to take a few seconds just to see if TM28 is actually Doomstoner, brother, or not. Because honestly, I, I think about it a lot. Blaine is about as straightforward as it really gets. Earthquake can one-shot the first three Pokemon, so just spam it. They go down, no problems here. But I'm trying to, you always know, you always make some concessions when you're trying to beat the game as fast as you can. So I didn't really heal here. I didn't take Blaine that serious. I can't one-shot the Arcanine, which means I can just go something like Outrage two times and just end the battle, right? But this one becomes very scary. I'm at 53 health. I only have one Earthquake left. It doesn't take it out. It uses Takedown. It takes me down to just 12 HP. But Gucci hangs on, and we do get the sixth badge of the video. At this point, the final two gems are just going to be kind of a formality. We've hit that power spike to make other things quicker. And just as a result, we do outspeed a lot of Sabrina's Pokemon. They're frail. I just go straight Earthquake. There's probably a better combination of moves, but I did heal before this to make sure I had full PP. So I just I spam it here just so I don't confuse myself and maybe take a risky reset from confusion later in the fight with Outrage. And when it comes to the final gem with Giovanni, there's no messing around here. Don't overcomplicate it. Just go straight Ice Beam in this battle just as quick as it started and now just like that we're moving on to rival number six and this battle's fine. For the most part, I have one-shot ranges on several Pokemon. There are a couple of slowdown spots. For example, instead of using Earthquake on Growlithe, I went Thunderbolt, but it wasn't enough, so it survived an extra turn. I should have known better than that. Alakazam, a little bit more threatening now. It survives a turn, does some pretty solid damage to me. But even if Blastoise was to use a move, I still think we would have got through this one pretty easy. It wasn't the fastest, but it was pretty safe. It didn't feel hard at all. And now, my friends, we are primed to start looking at the league. After the battle is where I'm just gonna, I'm gonna burn every candy I have here. It's enough to take me to level 51. 51 is kind of a weird level, but it helps out. Every little bit helps out that you don't have to go out of your way for. And that's just how it went today. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say something maybe a little controversial. I think that Gudra would have potential to be one of the best Pokemon I've ever played if it wasn't weak to ice. And this is the only reason we have to go to this level. Level 50 is better for a damage rounding threshold. Usually you would stop there, but like I said, Every little point of defense, every extra percentage of damage that I can do to her Pokemon just helped out and this is just where I landed. The only thing to note here is that you learn another new move at level 50, it's Power Whip. It's basically the Grass Top Hydro Pump, 120 base power, 85% accuracy, and it's going to be my key to getting past Lorelei. But first, let's talk about some more split data. And remember earlier when we took a look, we had about a minute lead and it's kind of fluctuated back and forth over the run, but now City here going into the Elite Four after Giovanni, we are at a perfect five minute lead, which is pretty good. Now, Gujra doesn't have any setup moves. Gujra has to pretty much rely on raw power, so we'll see how that plays out. But with a five minute cushion, this is looking like one of the few Pokemon that are going to be able to pass Mewtwo, so I'm excited to see how it plays out, and let's just get to it.
So this fight is going to be where the most nuance is at, where pretty much the whole run revolved around it. So let's just kind of cover it in the most detail here. Power Whip, level 50, gives you a guaranteed one shot on the Dugong. All you have to do is hit it. If you miss, that kind of sucks. You'll probably have to reset, but we do hit here. And Cloyster, very simple, use Thunderbolt. Now Power Whip will one shot Slowbro, but I go for Thunderbolt. I crit and I knock him out, but I didn't want that. What I really would want is if he went for Growl, which would give me a badge boost and make me hit a little bit harder on the back end of the fight, but I just get the crit. And here's what makes Gujar pretty special here to where a lot of Pokemon in this position weak to ice might have to go to like level 55, especially when you don't have a setup move, is that I can tank an ice punch from Jinx and a blizzard from Lapras. I'm that tanky. So basically all I have to do is not miss my moves and not get crit. Those are the two things. Sometimes that's very hard to do on Lorelei, but fortunately for us, this is the run we get exactly what we want to see. We tank the ice punch and we don't even have to tank the blizzard here because Outrage does so much damage for the crit that we get a retroactive super potion, which means I pretty much automatically win the battle. And this is the hardest part of the game down. So it's looking pretty good going forward. As for Bruno, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about him. Power Whips for the Onyx, Thunderbolts for the Hitmons, and then Outrage is just strong enough for the raw damage to one-shot the Machamp. Really all you need to know, let's go straight into Agatha. And this was another one of those fights, it's kind of like a lottery. I don't outspeed since I didn't use any Carboses and I'm trying to beat the game as fast as possible and I'm a low level. I don't outspeed the Gengars, which means I am susceptible to a turn one Hypnosis into Dream Eater or some other shenanigans. So it's something you have to worry about. It can just destroy your run and make you have to start over. I did teach Blizzard over Power Whip since it's no longer useful in the run and I get a pretty good fight here as you would expect from an optimized run. So everything goes down pretty good but the one part of the fight that I absolutely hated was that for some reason at level 53 you can one shot everything with Earthquake or Thunderbolt on the Golbat but for some reason the Arbok takes multiple Earthquakes. I just find it very, it just gets on my nerves that this thing survived every single Earthquake that I did throughout all my runs. It is what it is. Here she switched to Gengar, it's gonna survive. So it, it kind of wastes a little bit of time. It's a little bit, I don't know if I would say frustrating, but you know, you want everything to be smooth, one shot as fast as possible. But the important thing here, no resets, we make it through and now we're straight on to Lance. And I think just in Lance in general, when you think about Lance, it's about the most straightforward fight if you have the tools. You have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Do I have Thunderbolt? Yes, I can just one shot the Gyarados no matter what. Do I have an ice move? Yes, I can just one shot the dragons. I can use ice or electric on Aerodactyl doesn't really matter but in this case I do have Outrage so the plan here take out the Gyarados use Blizzard on the first Dragonair there's three Pokemon left I can just go Outrage three Pokemon up and down pretty easy battle it's about what you would expect I've already said that Lorelai is kind of the worst part of the run but this one's done there's only one battle left let's see how the champion goes a couple of parts of this fight that aren't great. They remind me a lot of the vanilla Mewtwo run. And in general, Gujar reminds me a lot of Mewtwo. It starts off with Psychic, where we start out with Outrage, both incredibly powerful moves. You got a very wide learn set, very high special, and you can make it through most parts of the game. But when you're really pushing the envelope, you just start to run out of steam towards the end of the game, especially with a lot of these bulky Pokemon on the champion team. We always pick the Squirtle team because we'll have Executor and Arcanine. They're both pretty tanky. And what you're going to see here is that things like Alakazam, they can hang on, they can survive an extra turn. Arcanine can hang on, survive an extra turn. And unless you get a Blizzard crit on the Executor, it's going to survive a turn. And this becomes like a dice roll right here. Are you going to get, if you get put to sleep with Hypnosis, it's not going to be good. You're going to waste a ton of time. And that's the case. I think Executor is the speed run killer for a lot of these runs. If you're not playing against Executor, you're giving yourself a much easier time in my opinion. Even with 150 base a special using a 240 effective power move you still cannot reliably one shot it without the crit luckily in this run it just goes for barrage worst move in the game you love to see it and at the end we could close this out with thunderbolt but just like the rest of the video we have to close it out with outrage and that's exactly what i do Gudra clocks in with a time of 1 hour, 49 minutes, and 51 seconds, and that's an incredible time. Now, I've been all over the place with my videos. I have the tier card set up for Gudra, but I don't have it completed yet. Now, 
You guys know I had the baby. Everything is like topsy turvy, and I'm just trying to record stuff when I can. And I decided really late to record this Gujar video. Pretty much when you're watching this video, I just got done making it like a few hours ago. So I don't have any tier cards for you. Or I got the tier card. I don't have a tier list for you, but just know that right now, as it stands, Gujar would be number three behind Alolan Ninetales and Mega Charizard X. So very respectable Pokemon, top three podium finish. But I have recorded some other stuff already that kind of mess with the tier list so i just don't have it ready for you guys but just know guja right now top three very good run like i said it's very there's a lot of things that it's very similar to mewtwo at but just considering how good outrage is how good dragon is in general outside of lorelei it just let this thing outpace everything past the mewtwo bar and be a very very good run it was a very very fun run and what's impressive is that it did it without any setup moves it just did it with raw power and i can always respect that a little bit more now if you're still watching the video you're a real one comment that down below and if you want to play the patch file if you're a channel member you can find that on the members part you can go to my patreon it's on there too and just going from like the raw file here i don't know how short this video is going to be i bet it's still going to be like 20 minutes long it is impossible to get a 10 minute video i really tried but you have to explain some stuff and 10 minutes just isn't going to cut it bud but that's about all i have for you guys I, I kind of inserted this into the rotation i think we got another crystal video next week not next week maybe two weeks from now and then i'm going to be working on another cross gen right after that that's pretty much all i have for you guys enjoy it go out get your shiny goomies have a good rest of your week and i'll catch you then bye